Hannah teaches early music at the University in Basel in Switzerland. She is a specialist and in Gregorian chant, particularly liturgical poetry and the music tradition and liturgy in the St. Vitus Cathedral in Prague, as well as specialist in the Czech Hussite liturgy. Uh, he was a, the general co-editor of the, of the critical edition of Histernice Cancional, a manuscript with the Czech Hussite liturgy. And her paper incorporates uh, both interests. So the late Roman chant in Bohemia at the turn of the 14th century and the creation of the vernacular liturgy in 1420s as documented by the famous Istebnice Cancional. And Hanna Vlhova will, will present her paper with the title Cantus Fractus in Vernacular Chant uh, of the 1420s lost genres and transcription challenges. So, Hannah. Thank you, Pavel, very much for the introduction. I will switch to my uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. After the paper by Barbara Haig Iglo that introduced us to the tradition and dissemination of the Cantus Fractus repertory during and after the Council of Basel, I will turn in my contribution to the situation in Bohemia in the immediately preceding decades. The decree of the St. James Synod, quoted by Barbara Haig, is today cited primarily by historians and theologians who see it as a support to the hypothesis that the Utrechtist church officially only allowed lesson and gospel in the Czech language in the liturgy, and that the vernacular version of the mass and the office liturgy documented in a number of manuscripts of the 15th and 16th centuries never seems to have found its formal confirmation. Regarding the music history, however, this decree indicates an established tradition of the Cantus Fractus repertory in Bohemia in the 1430s, and possibly already indicates preceding the Hussite revolts, as the Utrechtist liturgy and the Hussite liturgy to a great extent copied the Prague liturgy in its repertory, as established in the second half of the 14th century. But the situation is somewhat more complicated. The sources dating from the second half of the 15th and the 16th centuries confirm that the chants in Cantus Fractus did indeed found a fixed place in the Utrechtist liturgy and became part of the chant repertory also of the Sub Una Church. And Sub Una is the church that continued to, commune, uh, to have communion of only bread. The chants of the Mass Ordinary and Patrem chants in Cantus Fractus form a stable part of the Utrechtist chant books, and we will hear more about this repertory in the next few days. What is different, however, is the character of the repertory recorded in older sources, younger sources, where at first glance there is nothing to suggest that the Cantus Fractus was a widespread phenomenon. Yet from a few surviving fragments, we are step by step able to reconstruct a more accurate picture which at least partly confirms the statute indicated in the St. James Synod decree. What is striking, however, is the fact that different repertory in character and selection seems to be disseminated in Bohemia before the Hussite Wars that left no traces in late sources. The first evidence of a rhythmically organized chant in the Prague diocese dates back to the second half of the 14th century. The documents point, however, to two specific kinds of rhythmic organization that fall outside the concept of cantus fractus in the strict sense in the term, the term. Nevertheless, I will mention them here briefly as they illustrate the way of the inscription of cantus fractus in Prague sources that remained in use until the early modern age. The established practice here is perhaps best documented in a splendid gradual from St. Vitus Cathedral in Prague Castle from the 1380s. 
The first example comes from the group of the characteristic late medieval chant repertory, which are the strophic interpolations of Alleluia verses, usually rhythmically organized, as can be seen in the example of Alleluia Ave Lumen Sidereum, provided with the trope to Astra Castra. The scribe of the manuscript made use, as did the next generations of scribes, of the ambivalent reading of the basic character of the Czech chant rombing notation, romba, which depicts a single pitch in top context of chant notation, but which can be read as well as a semibrief in context of mensural notation. The trochaic rhythm of the strophic trope to astra castra can be th thus be recorded in two perfectly intelligible ways, as the scribe pointed out to us on folio 45 recto, either by using a double romba or by rumba that is a semi-brief that alternates with a brief. And we see two uh, strokes, each of them recorded the other way. The length of three beats can be illustrated, but uh, uh, could be depicted by three rumbas or combining a semi-brief and a brief, or a semi-brief and a longa respectively, which is used here uh, on the left side and elsewhere also rather as a sign for a long note without any claim to express its exact duration. Uh, so uh, this is what we see in many uh, contemporary manuscripts also recording uh, the uh, songs that long or brief in this context is just a sign, sing it longer. The use of mensural brief or longa as the last sign at the end of a longer musical phrase is uh, used by the scribe at the end of the Aymen in the exultet here, or in the Liber Generationis later in the manuscript, is becoming an established convention in Bohemia around 1400 and can be detected in a number of contemporary manuscripts coming from various milieus, for example, in the late 14th century diocesan gradual. Uh, around or in a, a manuscripts written in a manuscript written in a Cistercian monastery, Bishibrot, that is situated roughly 200 kilometers south of Prague. The rhythmic organization of core chant repertory that we know thanks to Marco Gozzi that appears in Italian sources since the end of the 13th century in Italy in the repertory of sequences, prefaces, lessons, or mass ordinary chants is hardly documented in church sources until the beginning of the 15th century. Nevertheless, I want to show in my paper that firstly, the practice was not only widespread here, but that it became latest by the end of the 14th century an important attribute of some new chant compositions in particular poetic genres and secondly, that the rhythmically organized sections could even be used to communicate important ideas at a time of tense ideological discussions before and during the Hussite revolts. This practice is best illustrated today, perhaps surprisingly, not in a Latin chant book, but in a source with a Czech translation of the Roman liturgy in the so-called Istepnice Cancional, written most likely in Prague between 1420 and 1434. In the history of Czech medieval music, liturgy, and history in general, this source has an exceptional position, not only for a large collection of Hussite, religious, social, critical, and war songs, but also as a unique document of the introduction of the Czech vernacular liturgy into a parish church as early as in the 1420s. A detailed repertory study from last year shows that the authors, we know that it was a group of translators, generally followed up on official Prague use, the rubric, Rubrica Ecclesia Pragensis, but recorded also a number of chants or chant variants that deviate from it. While these were originally attributed to the authors of the Czech liturgy, the most recent research is successful in the identification in Latin chant books of the late 15th or early 16th century manuscripts. From this perspective, the Istevice Cancional serves as an extraordinary valuable source that transmits the actual state of the liturgical practice in Prague diocesan churches that in many ways differed from uh, the official Prague liturgy.
I don't I don't know do you hear me because I just got a message that I am not that you cannot hear me yeah okay I can yes you. we can hear you fine okay so sorry so I am continuing with my presentation Uh, so, from, so I said that Istanice uh, Kansiona is an extraordinary valuable source uh, um, of the actual state of liturgical practice in Prague. Uh, what is important in context of our topic, the rhythmic organization of certain charts was here an important element. We are introduced to the repertory of the charm rhythmic performance in the proper sense already in the opening pages of the manuscript on Pagina 5. This is a part with the repertory for the main feasts of the church year. On Pagina 5, the fragment of the Czech translation of the sequence Veni Sancte Spiritus has survived. As we can see, the page reverses many details from the Hussite scriptorium. The scribe very likely worked with a written motor, judging from his omission that he complementarily corrected in the bottom page, margin. What is particularly remarkable is his or his predecessor's attempt to capture as accurately as possible the declamation of the Sank Czech language, which can be seen here uh, in the translation of the verse Da tuis fidelibus in Czech, Daish nam shiem viernim swim, where he aligns he align syllables and liquid sound M at the vote ends with a double rhomba and a liquid sense. A similar example can be observed also in the next verse at Daish Nam Shem. The preceding pair of verses, which are the translation of the here uh, of the Latin O lux beatissima and sine tua numine, presents another case. Is it clearly recorded here in Cantus Fractus? The streak of braves and drums that have the meaning of semi-brief in this context depicts an articulated trochaic rhythm with the brief representing two beats in the middle of the verse or three beats at the end of the verse. And here is the modern transcription of this passage in the critical edition that uh, we published 2005 with proposed um, reconstruction. Uh, the uh, of if brief is two or three bits long, it depends on the position uh, in the rhythmic pattern. And I wanted to say uh, what we should uh, say at the beginning. We have something like a conference bag where we I uh, put the uh, full transcription of the whole piece and all the next pieces that we will discuss here today. This example leads us to the core cantus fractus repertory already described in scholarly literature. Marco Gozzi could trade the first evidence of rhythmic performance of sequences back to the late 13th century, and we just heard from Barbara Hegiglo that she has a trace from the early 13th century in her uh, sources. And uh, Marco Gozzi's anthology, Cantus Fractus Italiano, includes more than 30 examples of the genre. Czech sources that are rich on repertory of notated sequences from around 1400 are, however, almost silent about its rhythmic performance. The practice was nevertheless known in Central Europe and is documented in contemporary sources from neighboring Silesia, for example. Uh, and I have here an uh, example from a graduate from Wroclaw, completed in 1416. The collection of notated sequences at the end of the manuscript contains several chants in Cantus Fractus, among them also the sequence Veni Sancte Spiritus, organized in a similar rhythm as we could see in the inscription of the Istemice Cancional. There is, however, one significant difference between the inscription in Italy and Silesia and the inscription in the Istemice Cancional. While the former display a continuous rhythm of whole strophes, the recording of the sequence Veni Sancte Spiritus in the Istemice Canciona indicates rhythmic performance of some strokes only. How shall we understand it? Do we face merely a scribe's inconsistency here? Or another option, can we, uh, can we apply a similar rhythmic pattern to the remaining strokes? A similar case of partial rhythmic organization of sequences 
which is that is application of rhythm to only one pair of strokes, appears sporadically in other early 15th century sources, leading to the Cistercian milieu or to the repertory of the Franciscan order in Bohemia. But it also appears in two other sequences recorded in the Istenice Cancional, both prescribed for the Corpus Christi feast. The first is the vernacular version of the sequence Ave Caro Christi Regis, which is in translation, Hail the Body of Christ the King, written in Bohemia around 1360s. In this case, it is a really short rhythmic pattern in two short parallel strophes expressed with rhymes um, read as semi breves obviously, and longer. That is, has here similar uh, to the brief, brief, brief in the previous example, length of two beats. What is important here is the context in uh, which the rhythm is used, text context, I mean. In the Czech translation, these verses read, read as follow. Do our food, salvation, feed us in you. Do our strength, a thing of being, do our a living sacrifice. They are addressed to Christ, represented in the host, and emphasize the communion as a necessary condition of salvation, which is also one of crucial ideas advocated by besides the formers. A similar case appears in the next sequence, in, which is a genuine Czech vernacular sequence in Czech, Abych me hodně pamatovali, in English, that we might remember worthily for the Corpus Christi feast, one of few charms that can be attributed to Hussite authors. This type the scribe use a double rumba or triple rumba even here, this place, to indicate the rhythmical pattern with a longa being used at the end as the last sign of the entire chant, again as a signal to extend or possible slow down. In this sequence, too, the rhythmic melody is coupled with an important message, which, and possibly not surprisingly, one of the most radical ideas is the of Hussite reformers, namely the necessity of the communion of chalice for salvation. The text in English translation reads as follows. O gracious Christ, so loving to us, how can we repay you? Let us reverently drink the chalice of salvation which you have prepared. And again, the full text, the whole transcription of both sequences you can find in our conference back. Both examples strongly uh, suggest strongly that the rhythmicized passages within purely chant performance, that is within Cantus Planus, and so we talk about Cantus Fractus in context of Cantus Planus, were used by Hussite singers as a specific mean to communicate or highlight important messages. There is another document that supports this hypothesis. In response to the burning of Master Jan Hus in Constance in 1415, a Latin sequence, Rex Regum, was composed in Bohemia, a very individual piece of poetry of an over-the-top length consisting of no less than 33 strophes. Uh, this, um, the, again, the whole text is um, on, in, the, in the conference back. As for its contents, it is a sharp indictment of the Council of Constance, which is called here pejoratively Complices Antichristi, the Companions of Antichrist, or Cohort Satanica, the Devil's Consortium, made responsible for the murder of an innocent man, and of the Apologia of Master Jan Hus, who is described here as the most excellent preacher Lumen Predicatorum Excellentissimus. Musically, the sequence is an almost strictly syllabic composition with no clear internal cadences within long strophes, differing clearly from the majority of new contemporary sequences with symmetrical or regular song melodies. However, the style changes in the last pair of strophes, and this is what I have in the next slide here. Here, the singing community turns to Jesus with a prayer for salvation and reunion with Jan Hus in the heavenly kingdom. It is these two final strophes that allow employ rhythmicized melody in Trochaic rhythm. Consequently, the whole sequence closes with a persuasive proclamation 
similar to what we could observe in the sequence abychme hodně pamatovali recorded in Vistenice Cancionale. But what are the roots of this practice and are there similar cases known outside Bohemia? This is a question I am still not able to answer that I hope to open at this conference. Father, if we have scarce but clear evidence of a rhythmic organization of sequences preceding the Usai tradition, how much has this way of performance affected the repertory of tropes and even more importantly of hymns for which there is so far no written evidence in Prague's sources or we did not notice them? In other words, how much have we overlooked and what is today irretrievably lost? The latest question, later question will become particularly relevant when looking at another piece of rhythmic chant in the Cancional, namely the Czech Patrem Omnipotentem, recorded in the section with Husai songs. Husai theologians place great emphasis on religious education among laymen, and from this perspective, it is not surprising that the collection of Czech Husai songs famous for its rich selection of religious, war and social critical chants, is introduced here with a group of prayers, the vernacular version of Our Father, Hail Mary, I Believe in God, and sung Ten Commandments. It is therefore not surprising that the scribe recorded four different versions of the credo prayer here, in the form of a simple song with a cyclic repetition of the same musical phrase, which was used also for Pater Noster and Ave Maria in vernacular, and a poetic paraphrase in the form of a religious song of 14 stanzas. And then a pair of chants that are vernacular versions of Latin liturgical chants. The first, uh, the chant credo, which is included in many medieval books from Bohemia, followed by a short credo that is concluded with cuius regni non erit finis, recorded in menstrual notation, cantus fractus. The collection of songs in Istemice Cancional is among the best studied medieval musical documents in Czech musicological literature since its discovery of the manuscript in 1870s. It is surprising how successfully all the researchers managed to avoid almost any more specific comment on this particular chant. Perhaps it is the notation that makes at first glance the impression of a messy whirlwind of tiny notation values that makes no sense. Its first full reconstruction therefore appeared only in the second volume of a critical edition at the end of the last year, in which I proposed following solution. The scribe appears to have used consequently the minims for the semi-brief value, perhaps, and here we come again to the Czech context, context of the Czech rhombic notation, to make absolutely, to abs distinguish absolutely clearly between the chant and menstrual notations, and to prevent the ambivalent reading of the semi-brief and rhomba signs. It was also only after this proposed reconstruction that the chant could be identified for the first time as the vernacular version of the famous credo cardinalis, known to many sitting to, in this virtual room, recognized by Marco Gozzi as a prototype of the Cantus Fractus repertory. But how did this core piece of the Cantus Fractus repertory get into the Husai liturgy? This question has several points of view. In the liturgy of the Hussites, who proclaimed this emphasis, simplicity and clarity, this is an alien element, considering in particular its incorporation to the religious strophic songs collection. But apparently the Hussite singers particularly appreciated this chant, adding the exclamation, Amen Celestial is the hymn, hymn at its end, and giving it an attribute lacking in most vernacular chants. The incorporation of the Credo Cardinalis into the Husai liturgy may have been stimulated by its prominent position in the Latin chant repertory in previous years, specifically in the liturgy of the Prague churches. But here we are confronted with total silence from the sources. To this day, I was not able to identify its inscription in any sources from the pre Husite period, and it is, as far, as far as I and my team colleagues were able to find out, absent also in the well-stocked collections from the post-Husite period. 
Does this mean that here too, we have to accept that we lost with contemporary sources, also the repertory that once formed an important element of the singing practice in Bohemia? Finally, I would like to return back to the first example introduced in my paper, which is the, uh, which was the rhythmical pattern of the vernacular version of the sequence Veni Sancte Spiritus. The scribe of the Istemice Cancional has indicated a rhythmic pattern in only the second part of both parallel strophes, the first being recorded using the rhombs only, rhombic notation. This means that Cantus Planus and Cantus Fractus are both combined within one stanza, or another option, we can propose to apply the rhythmic pattern to the whole strophe. And this is a question that arises with many other manuscripts coming from other regions and other periods. I'm thinking, for example, on Codex Quons from the San Gol Monastery written in 1507 with its uh, repertory of Cantus Fractus. In these cases, the music philology with its strict rules is hitting its limits and there is need to consult experienced performers to propose a possible reconstruction. We are faced with even bigger challenge concerning the records from the second half of the 15th century, such as those that were added at the end of the Istemice Cancional in the second half of the 15th century. What we see here is the inscription of the Trobe Sanctus uh, for the Corpus Christi Feast, Ave Dulce to Frumentum which was introduced into the repertory no later than at the beginning of the 15th century. Contrary to the record from 1410, the inscription in the Istemice Cancional transmits a rhythmic organization of some whole strokes here to dignare nos mundare, using Rome's semi-brief and, uh, semi and a minute. While the transcription of the strophe is no big challenge, Melismatic phrases that incorporate signs of the mental notation into Cantus Planus, as observed here at the beginning uh, of the trope, are presenting a more complicated matter. Shall we read the whole section as a semi-brief and minims? Shall we understand the minims as signs for quicker performance? Was this performance life already at the beginning of the 15th century? But we have no records of it. And with this question, I would like to conclude with thanks for your patience. Thank you very much, Hannah. We have applause now. <laughs> now. Uh, so thank you very much. I think it's per, it was really very important to, 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 to know these new facts about origins of uh, Fusai's liturgical uh, chant. Uh, maybe there are some questions or comments. Uh, I have. Uh, I have. <laughs> yes, please, Marco. Uh, there are many great questions uh, for you and for Barbara, but I think that it is better to leave uh, for the final final discussion. Okay, but some some brief uh, question. Uh, why? Credo Cardinalis with B flat uh, and Y without Ficta. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Okay. I think I follow the manuscript, so um, it is always the question of reconstruction. But we can uh, look at it. It I think that it's prescribed in the manuscript, so we used uh, what was there. Yeah. It, it sounded very strange with with mm -hmm. B, B flat, but. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe some, somebody else would like to ask a short question or maybe comments. Uh, so there is uh, there's some question uh, in the chat. So Hannah, please uh, answer if you would like to answer these questions. And uh, because we there's 20 past four, so it's the highest time for coffee break. Uh, although rather uh, self-service. Uh, so I think that we have uh, 10 minutes for break and we can meet, we should meet for the next uh, second session, which will be chaired by uh, Luisa Nardini. Uh, 
thank you for everybody for, for, for coming here. Uh, so I must say that, that I was never chairing a session in Prague sitting in my kitchen in Warsaw, so it was really very important for me experience. And I hope we will see in 10 minutes. Thank you very much.